How are we doing people? Coming with something a little bit new, a little bit different today. A couple of subscribers said that they liked the short studies that I've done on the channel, but they'd prefer it if it had some actual commentary rather than being pre-made with the, the text and the edit. So here it is, we're going to give it a go. So this video is going to cover effective punching biomechanics, power production in boxing, technique, how to be a knockout puncher, whatever you want to call it. That's in essence what it's going to cover. And who better else to learn from than Julian Jackson, one of the most notorious, one of the hardest punchers in boxing history. So uh, you probably wouldn't be able to make out that's Julian Jackson other than if you've seen this fight many times before. I apologize in advance for the quality, but the fight is well over, well, it's many decades old and um, I'm sure we can be forgiven for that. But we are going to assess the technique of Jackson, who, as I say, was a notorious puncher, extremely hard puncher, and it's because he had his technique down pat. So what I'm going to do is play the video in real time. These angles are okay, they're not bad, but there's a, an angle at the end, a camera angle that we want to study, that's going to be the best observation point. So as we can see, Terry Norris being swiftly dealt with, very brutal knockout, clean knockout as well. Okay, so here's what we want. So what we see here is Julian Jackson trying to close the distance and edge forward on Terry Norris. And from this frame, we can see that the vast majority, if not all, of Julian Jackson's weight is on his back leg, his right leg. And what that means in boxing terms is the, the stance of a boxer where your weight is, be it over the back leg or the front leg, that will determine which punch has the power in it, which punch is loaded. So right now, the weight's on the back leg, that means the back hand for Julian Jackson, his right hand, that is the power punch. But how do we express that power? How do we articulate it? Well, if we go by frame by frame, we can see that Jackson is, he has now planted his foot and he's using a bit of elastic recoil. So he's moving his body. And what that does is think of a, a slingshot. His body is the body of the slingshot. His arm is the rubber band. His fist is the stone. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to slingshot his hand forward into the target. But what we need to understand is how power and force is generated in a boxing stance. Now, this is pretty much um, the same throughout most sports, but keeping it boxing related. To get power in a punch, you want to transfer your weight from one leg or one side of the body to the other. So Julian Jackson wants to transfer his weight from the back leg to the front leg, and he's going to do that through a right hand. And so if we continue going frame by frame, we can see that his front leg planted and now his, his back leg, the foot is starting to rotate. And what this does, it unlocks his body. So rather than keeping this foot flat and anchored to the ground, his body is fully articulating this weight being sent back to front. We have his heel turning, so his foot is turning, the knee, the hip, the shoulder, his head goes through the target because where the head goes, the body follows. And remember, the body is the weight and the weight is the power. And then we can see that once his body is almost entirely on the other side of Norris's head, so he's punching through the target, his weight is now here. The projectile is here. Remember the rubber band? And it crashes into Norris's jaw. And the final frame, if you like, we can see that the weight is now almost entirely on Julian Jackson's front leg. So the weight went from back to front and all of Julian Jackson's joints, his major joints, have accommodated that weight transfer. And the, the fist, which is the last 5% of the punch, that's the, 
the transmission, if you like, or that, that's what delivers the power into the target. And what we can see is Julian Jackson doesn't just hit the target. He just doesn't, he doesn't punch at it, but he rips his weight through it. And a human head doesn't weigh very much, something like 12 pounds on average. And he's just ripped all of this weight through that target. He didn't land on the target and pull it back. He ripped through it. And so we can carry on and we see the effect. Truly brutal. And uh, yeah, that is power punching in theory. So what I want you guys to do now is bearing these points in mind. I hope they're clear. <laughs> bearing them in mind. Watch your favourite fighters and now assess their technique. Because some fighters may have decent punching power, but you'd be able to see one aspect that can be improved. Now, of course, there are many aspects, many factors that play a part in, in getting a knockout. But in terms of punching power, this theory, this uh, these points that I've raised here today, they really are the be-all and end-all when it comes to the biomechanics. And so... What I'd challenge you guys to do is watch your favourite fighters or watch fights that are coming up and assess the punching power and the biomechanical technique of the fighters you're watching and uh, see if they're any good. Hold them up to the standard of Julian Jackson because he's someone who really did have their punching technique down pat. So it's about the weight transfer, it's about the articulation of the body, how fluently can you take your weight from one side to the other. That is what generates power in a punch so uh yeah hope you enjoyed this video guys i hope it's clear um if you want to have a discussion about this in the comment section by all means leave a comment and i'll get back to you like share subscribe all that good stuff thanks for watching and i'll catch you on the next video